ask that you look over us here tonight to give us the wisdom to do what's right for the taxpayers of Long Beach. And that we thank you for your mercy and your grace that you give us. We ask you to bless the first responders, their families, our military, and their families. For we ask all these things in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. Amen. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic. Okay, um, roll call. Uh, Patrick, here. Pete? Here. Mikey? Here. Uh, Timmy McCaffrey's on the phone. Uh, Angie? Here. And Mr. Bernie? Present. Okay, we have a quorum. Um, and uh, first uh, item up is uh, public hearing for FY23-24 budget. Um, can I get a, a, a motion, motion to open the uh, public hearing? Have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Mo uh, any opposed? Motion carries. Okay. So uh, I'll start off by just kind of uh, reading out some issues that we've worked through here, and uh, we'll kind of move forward from there. Um, the board has had uh, three work sessions. <clears throat> We've worked diligently to pass and balance this budget. Uh, when we first started out, uh, the general fund was in a deficit of $1.2 million. Uh, additional items that were looked at during this increase were pay raises to the firefighters and our police department, uh, mandatory PERS increase of 2% for every employee, uh, insurance uh, premiums for property and liability, um, an overall increase of doing business that affects the city just like the citizens. Um, so with that, uh, Bob, oh, do we have the list? Yeah, we have one person um, to speak for. Okay. Marked. Marked off? Okay. Uh, before we take, uh, you know, uh, public uh, Comment, excuse me. Uh, does anybody on the board have anything to discuss about the proposed budge, budget that we have in front of us? Okay. We'll let the people talk. So Fair enough. Uh, Ms. Wendy Wagner. Thank you. Um, good evening to the Board of Aldermen. Uh, Wendy Wagner, 210 South Island View, Long Beach. Um, I actually come in front of you, I'm speaking on behalf of many Long Beach citizens tonight um, to minimize, try and minimize this, the number of speakers in front of you. Um, I've reached out to over uh, 50 citizens and gathered all of their commentary around the budget. Um, I, as, I, as well as other citizens, have been active in the Board of Aldermen's working budget sessions, as well as performing a tremendous amount of research around the 19 through 23 budgets, as well as the 24 budget. Um, and we also did some review of the audits on the SOS website. While I do not, nor any of the citizens that I spoke to, expect answers tonight, um, we would and uh, uh, would appreciate some type of response by one of the aldermans within a week, just so that we can understand. Here are some of our findings and questions to the aldermans. Uh, first, it was really hard to review the budget throughout even the working sessions and try and tie it to your city's strategic plan. The last one we found is February 2013. It was a 10-year plan, and if you read the 2025 vision, it no longer appears applicable. Now, that's what's uh, accessible to us. There are many citizens who know development is needed to raise revenue. So a joint created citizen and city new strategic plan would allow the citizens who are fighting hard for compromise and mitigation of roadblocks to smart development across the various development plans 
to have a documented roadmap to live by. Um, all joking aside, uh, we've called it, what do we want to be when we grow up, Long Beach? Um, is the e one of the first questions also that we would like to know is, is the econ Economic Development Committee up and running today? Um, we don't see many minutes or anything for it, so is it, I think it would help us dramatically. Um, some of the commentaries on the budget trends from 19 to 23. Uh, it seems the revenue is increasing by about 4% year over year except for 2021, which there's an anomaly there with significant drops on both sides. I uh, don't know if that was at a time frame, but it, it's off. Yet expenses continue to grow at a higher rate of 5 to 6%. Despite the revenue challenges that we're all aware of, it appears we are growing. However, optics show that our spending hasn't been controlled at the same rate. FYI, we found some significant variances between the budgets and audited financials for 20 and 21, so that confused us a little bit, but that's beside the point. Um, I'm going to tell you that all of those percentages that I quoted is off of the website budget, not the audited financials. Um, the citizens would like the assumptions uh, that are tied to the budget. Thank you, Donald. You gave me a few, um, and I really do appreciate that. That has helped tremendously. Um, some of the other things that we would like to see is, uh, you know, are there any new hires expected by department? Um, you did answer the increase, so thank you for that. We appreciate it. But any of the other uh, large assumptions would be great. From the, work, from the budget working session, it appeared that we were the last one. It appeared we were looking at an $874,000 deficit in our 24 budget. Um, the budget that we reviewed uh, that we have now does not show that. Uh, I understand that uh, the tax increase proposed is part of that and is uh, addressing some of that negative balance. However, before a property tax is actually approved, the citizens would like the Board of Aldermen and the Long Beach City to actually look at a few items. Um, some of them are minor, some of them are large. Um, one is the <coughs> library. Everybody loves our library, and nobody's going to sit here and say that we don't love our library. However, Harrison County, uh, we would like to understand why we have a city library versus a Harrison County-ran public library. Uh, Harrison County runs libraries in Biloxi, D'Iberville, Gulfport, Past Christian, and Socher. It runs a total of nine libraries. Long Beach's, excuse me, 2023 budget for the library was $406,071. I did not have 24, so I couldn't state that, um, which, was which is close to half of our 24 negative budget number from the working session. So the question out there from the citizens is, has Long Beach considered allowing the public library to be absorbed back in the accounting where revenue and expense is spread across a much larger footprint. If there is a reason why we cannot, we would love to know why. Um, also, a hard look at every line item would be appreciated, including fees being charged, and should an efficiency study be performed on the city in general. Based on the working session, some decisions were made to pause engineer projects Yet some funds are in the 24 budget for new engineering projects. Why pause projects and yet add funds for new projects in the same year? Maybe there are critical projects that we the citizens are not aware of, but it would be good to understand at least from an optics standpoint. Long Beach pays for 24-hour harbor guards. Is, this, is the full 24 hours still required and if so, why until our harbor is repaired? Could these resources be used in other areas of the city where we currently pay contractors for? And also, just minute, but just looking at optics in general, although very small um, with a negative budget, the citizens would like to understand why admin travel has increased in 24. 
Um, those are just some of the commentary, and if you have answers, that's great, but we don't expect them tonight. Thank you, Ms. Wendy. Um, so, in some of our, our discussion here, we may be able to supply some of these answers. Um, if not, I will, uh, I will work to get these for you here. Um, that was trouble. All right. Uh, so, kind of moving on to some of these uh, items that I've uh, looked at here. Uh, so, part of our uh, balancing... Uh, was reduction of part-time employees and hours. Uh, so with that, uh, in this upcoming budget, uh, the part-time hours for uh, security at the harbor uh, has been cut. And Harry, what, what were the hours that we were closing the harbor? We just closed uh, four hours. All together. Four hours a day. Four hours. A what day. was the time? Sir? Well, okay. So four hours a day then is what we were cutting. Yeah that the harbor will be closed. Okay. And um, so uh, with some of these departments running tight budgets already, we've made minor changes to individual lines in there. Um, cutting part-time uh, hours at the library was also uh, a way that we were able to save expenses. Um, the increase in millage to by 4.65 mills will generate uh, roughly $600,000 in uh, general fund, uh, which uh, will the effect on the common household that is the property tax assessed, not appraised value, but assessed value of 200,000 would be an increase of $90 a year. Um, also, what we've had to look at which is not reflected in the general budget, is our water and sewer fund. Uh, the new contract for solid waste with HCUA, which is Harrison County Utility Authority, for garbage pickup and debris pickup that we have on Mondays is over a half million dollars over last year. Um, debt service went up by $170,000 uh, in new debt to pay for the uh, Price Brothers pipe that was uh, recently completed throughout the city. Um, let's see. The, the remaining balance was, uh, was funded through Gulf Coast uh, restoration funds. So the, in this budget, the utility bill or your water bill is looking at an increase of $10. Um, tonight, we are having the public hearing for public comment. <laughs> but the budget will not be adopted until Tuesday, uh, September the 12th at 5 p.m. So, um, with that being read. I think we let Keeney explain <coughs> about the library system, if you don't mind. I can. Yeah. Um, so we looked at this several years ago. I'm sorry, can y'all hear me? Yes. We did look at this several years ago. I contacted the county and see, to see what it would take to incorporate the city's library into the county library system. In order to do that, we would have to buy, at the time, we would have to buy all new computers and buy the software that they use. And it was at a, an expense of probably $150,000 at the time. And also, the county doesn't just take a library. You still have to continue to fund it. And so at the time, we were looking at contributing, they were still wanting us to contribute like two hundred dollars to $300,000 a year for that library located within our city limits. So at that point, we would still be expending close to what we're expending now. And it, we d it was decided that the city would just retain it and, and run it the way that the city saw fit to. It just wasn't a, an economic benefit to do that. But the issue is going to be that we're spending more on the library than we're spent, or as much on the library as we're spending on public works. And we don't, I'm kind of read my notes maybe that looks like with some of your concerns we just won't have a library I'm just making sure it's going to come to that in the next couple of years so without the cuts yeah. now then it's just going to be something that we're not going to be able a service we won't be able to offer at four hundred thousand dollars a year it's just not self-sustainable there's no way so I, and, I, and I'd like to speak about the harbor and a couple other projects one of the reasons that we are still funding the 
harbor guards. There's four full-time harbor guards there. We're dealing with homelessness along our coastline, so they have to stay down there, and not just that, but during night and day. So, because just recently, Recently, there was an incident down there where the police had to be called because of homelessness. Regardless of that, the construction, believe it or not, has started, and we do want a harbor guard down there to kind of keep eye, the eyes for the city and give us feedbacks on it. As far as the, you said the projects were stopped. We, did, we never stopped a project yet. That was how that we discussed it. It was discussed. We have about $2 million in matching funds we have to come up with for all of our projects. And believe me when I tell you this, we have a lot of projects on the books, and they're coming to light right now. A lot of projects right now you see is in the ground, and you can't see that. I mean, I, I'll take this project right here at uh, Pineville and, and Railroad Street. Big projects. We have to match a lot of those. We have to match a lot of the... Uh, harbor, uh, two and a half percent. We have to match a lot of those. So we have figured up that's about $2 million that we will have to match. And it's not coming all to, for this year. But this is one of the reasons, and believe me when I tell the public this, we have worked very hard on this budget. I mean, we understand fuel. We understand insurance. Our, as of right now, our building insurance has went up $300,000 this year. This is a figure we're getting from them. I mean, this is just, it's the way it is right now. So, and if we come up lower, we're going to look at different ways. Believe me, this board has talked about looking at different ways, not stopping after this budget is adopted, but looking at different ways to meet and cut if we have to, or cut some more to where we can. We're pretty tight right now on a budget. So. Well, to add to that also, we've had contractors that we have that are doing projects that have quit because they are wanting more money. Uh, their costs have gone up. So that means we have to go to the expense of rebidding and redoing that <coughs> contract, and that's just because everything has gone up. Um, and we have looked at the library and, you know, can it be closed two or three days a week, and how can we consolidate? and and a proactive, I will say, they did hold a fundraiser last year, and, and, and hopefully um, that can be done in the future uh, to raise money. But there, I think there's improvement for everything, but with the budget we're, we're working with, I, I think what we've done is a good job. But, you know, there's always room for improvement. But we are looking at all those. But I will say that um, there are, are things we can do, and also at the harbor, just the liability people are still wanting to go past that's the to don't pass this line that's a liability to the city so you know having that continuous security is needed for sure down there but that, i think um, private security might be something that has to be looked at to right look and the same with the lot i mean it's not it's just how can, how can we do it right. how can we cut costs it's like The, that really helps. I do want to say one thing. Do y'all want to mention, because we heard it in the working session, haven't heard it here. When was the last time a tax increase occurred in Long Beach? It, I was close. It was 1998 to 2002 board, and that was the last time a city millage rate, not school, but city. And I think it would be fair, Donald um, has the the comparison, when people think about taxes, you have to think there's city taxes and then there's additional taxes that we pay for, school taxes and ad valorem. And our city tax is comparable to every city on the coast. It's when we include the other taxes. And Donald can speak as we pull <coughs> I, I have it in front of me. I haven't digested. So I don't want to tell you that we're paying less than a different city at this point in time, I, I don't mind sharing this. This came from the county. Um, I'll share this with you. I don't want to read it wrong and then, you know, be quoted as we pay less than X city 
and that not be true because I'm reading it incorrectly. Um, one of the questions that was asked, not to skip over that, but one of the uh, questions that was asked was travel expense from August 16th meeting, which was our last public hearing, uh, that those increases were cut out of the mayor's office, out of the alderman budget, and I have one other here. I'm just kind of, I was trying to page through to get you that answer. Was it court as well? No. No, it was uh, Oh, oh, uh, the building department, yes. So that was the three travel expenses that were cut out. Thank you. Um, to go back to Angie talking about uh, contracts that have uh, mid-year been redone, it, our paving contract, our, uh, we put that out to bid at the beginning of each year for paving, uh, potholes, street uh, repairs, things like that. We were notified in June or July Am I roughly right about that? That uh, this contractor would no longer be able to honor that price. So at this point in time, we've had to go back out, redo, uh, request new bids, which that has been publicized um, for this next coming budget. So you'll see where recently we haven't been doing much paving, but you know, one of the, uh, one of the questions came up was uh, Mitchell Road. Uh, the widening of Mitchell Road. It's one of the reasons that that widening project hasn't been completed yet because for liability, safety reasons, we can't go in there and dig up half the road that's a narrow road already and take away any kind of shoulder that may or may not be there and, and open ourselves for more liability. So that's a, that, I know that's kind of pinpointing on some of your questions, but while we had it here, I did want to answer some of those. Um, so going down the, well, um, with no other comments, do I, uh, motion to close the can I get a motion to close the public hearing? Motion. Second. Okay. Um, all in favor? Aye. Any opposed? All right, motion carries. So uh, do we have any further discussion from the board regarding this uh, budget? I was just going to tell Wendy, if you got my phone number, you can. I'll answer other questions. <clears throat> All right. Uh, moving on. Um, so, at, again, just to reiterate, tonight we will not close the meeting. We will uh, suspend the meeting and reopen it on September the 12th at 5 p.m. to adopt our new budget. Okay. Uh, announcement, proclamations, and uh, presentations. I have one. Uh, is there anybody here tonight for the uh, children's cancer awareness? Yes. Oh, okay. If you will, come on up. How are y'all? Mr. Hendricks, how are you, sir? Good. Come on up. Y'all come stand by me here. I'm going to read this for us. And, uh, and then uh, we'll take a couple pictures, and I'll give you this proclamation here, sir. Uh, if everybody notices, uh, in honor of uh, child uh, cancer awareness, we're wearing these gold ribbons tonight in honor of that. <coughs> so, um, <clears throat> certificate of proclamation. Whereas more than 15,000 children under the age of 19 will be diagnosed with cancer in the United States in 2023, including more than 120 in Mississippi. And approximately one in 263 children in the United States are diagnosed with cancer before tw their 12th birthday. And cancer is the leading cause of death by disease among children in the United States and whereas nearly 500,000 survivors of childhood cancer are alive in the United States today, and whereas by the age of 50, more than 99% of childhood cancer survivors have had a chronic health problem 
and 96% have experienced a severe life-threatening condition caused by the toxic toxicity of the treatment that initially saved their life. And whereas childhood cancer is, least, is the least funded cancer by the government and it is up to nonprofit organizations like St. Baldwick Foundation to raise the much needed funds. Now, therefore, it be resolved that the city of Long Beach has designated September of 2023 as National Childhood Cancer Awareness Month. Um, in testimony, whereas the city of Long Beach, th this day, September 5th of 2023, signed by Mayor George Bass. This uh, gentleman here is uh, Mr. Hendricks and his family. Uh, Mr. Hendricks here has been going through a long battle, and we believe that he's doing well, and we are proud that you're here with us tonight, sir. Thank you. Hey, sir, they didn't have it in your size? I'm here to, <laughs> to pay a debt for these gentlemen here. We made a wager with uh, the city of Pass Christian for the Oyster Bowl, and I opened my mouth and I made a uh, nice wager with uh, Mayor Rafferty from the city of Pass Christian. And I told him that if Long Beach lost, I would uh, stand in front of our meeting tonight wearing a Pass Christian. <laughs> Uh, Jersey, I'm about to pass out. <laughs> Stadium. Stadium. Yeah, it's it's so anyway, it, it just shows the sportsmanship that the city of the pa of Pass and Long Beach have in good fun. We made this wager, and I stand behind my uh, my word, and I'm going to wear this jersey the rest of the night. I may black out up here, but congratulations to Pastor Chan winning. And congratulations to the Long Beach uh, Bearcats. They played their heart out, but unfortunately, the scoreboard didn't go in our direction. So, thank you. <laughs> All right. Enough of the fun stuff. Mm. Nothing. No more from you. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, Amendments to the municipal docket. Hearing none, uh, moving on. Approved minute, uh, Mayor and Board of Aldermen, August 15th, 2023, and August 16th, uh, 2023, work session. So moved. Second. Have a motion and a second. Uh, any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Uh, Planning and Development Commission, August 24th, 2023, regular. Motion. Second. Second. Uh, any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Approved docket of claims number 090523. So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor? I mean, any discussion? Sorry. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Uh, nothing under unfinished business. Under new business, we have a special event application for Long Beach Community Development Association, my, one of my favorite events, uh, the Sea Santa Celebration. So moved. Second. Okay. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 
Any opposed? Motion carries. A special event application, uh, Pink Heart Funds uh, Ribbon Walk. Motion. Move. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Uh, City of Long Beach, 4th of July uh, Jubilee. Motion. Second. Motion and second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Special event application, Fresh Junkie Productions, LLC, the Mississippi Gulf Coast Marathon. Motion. I have a motion second. And, a, and a second. Any discussion? D discussion. Yeah. Chief, that's, yo, that just comes from Henderson Point, correct? Yes, sir. it starts at Henderson Point and ends at the uh, uh, Shucker Stadium, right? Gotcha. Okay, good. Thank you, sir. Uh, did I get a uh, all, in all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Uh, Long Beach High School Homecoming Parade. And Pep Rally. And Pep Rally, excuse me, we didn't add that. Motion. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Okay, on number six and number seven, Ms. Johnson's gonna recuse herself. Uh, so six, uh, we have Coast Cares Foundation, Jingle Bells 5K Race. Motion. I have a motion. Second. And a second. Uh, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Uh, Coast Cares Foundation Veterans Day Parade. Motion. Move. Second. I have a motion and a second. Uh, any, any discussion? Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Uh, motion carries. Uh, um, just for, we, we went through a bunch of special events applications. Uh, and I did not mention the dates on any of them, but they will be posted on the, uh, in the minutes and on the calendar uh, at the city website. <clears throat> uh, excuse me, moving on number eight under new business, uh, Recreation Center Fee Waiver Request for Institute for Disability Studies. So move. Second. All right, I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed, motion carries. All right, uh, Memorandum of Understanding, Mississippi Department of Re Marine Resources, Go Mesa, Eastern Bulkhead. So move. Second. I have a motion and a second. Uh, any discussion? So this is the Eastern Bulkhead uh, at funding at the uh, harbor, which is $2.69 million. Um, all right, so uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries, sorry. Uh, next one up is uh, MOU for the Mississippi Department of Marine Resources, Go Mesa, Southern Quay Bulkhead. So move. Second. A motion and a second. Uh, just for discussion here, that's $2.55 million for the Southern Quay. Um, any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. All right, uh, number 11 is uh, work change directive, bottom to top for the Mount Bass drainage. Motion. Dave, second. that's what we talked about. Uh, let me, let me get a, let me get a second real second. quick. Second. second. I have a motion and a second, now you that's can go. That's what we talked about the other day. That's the one that we had a meeting with the contractor. Do we know how close they are? Uh, from what I understand, Anthony's no. Here. Anthony, Anthony. 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 Anthony Greer with Pickering Farm. Thank you, um, sir. They're going to resume work tomorrow, and we're figuring two to three weeks, weather permitting, they'll be done with all the pipe work. So from there, we'll do some substantial completion inspection, and it'll be cleanup work at that okay. point. Okay, thank you. Very clear. Right. Okay, just to repeat, uh, that uh, work will start back tomorrow. They're estimating about two weeks for completion. Um, so any more discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. All right, uh, number 12, municipal court uh, public defender. I have uh, one resignation and one appointment. So move. Second. I have a motion and a second. Uh, let's see. Okay. Um, uh, Jarrett Little is the resignation. He, it looks like he's being transferred. And uh, we're appointing Mr. Jason Purvis this evening. Is Mr. Purvis here? Okay. Um, we extend our gratitude to Mr. Purvis. 
so uh, any further discussion? Yes, uh, just yes, sir. Uh, would like to uh, wish uh, Tony Jarrett a little well uh, yes. in, in his military endeavors and uh, Godspeed for his safety. Yes, I, I'm sorry, I did uh, skip over that. He's being uh, transferred with the military. So, um, any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Uh, municipal Court Prosecutor Pro Tem, I have one appointment, and that is uh, Mr. Patrick Williams. Is Mr. Williams here? No. Motion. Okay, I have a motion and a second. Um, any discussion? Uh, we wish to extend our gratitude to Mr. Williams as well. Um, hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Okay. Okay, uh, moving on. Number 14, uh, landscape maintenance contract with uh, streetscape signage. So move. I have a motion. Second discussion. Uh, uh, sorry. Um, I have a motion and a second. Uh, hearing none, uh, I mean, discussion. any discussion? Yes. Sorry. Just to let the public know, no. this was included in our, <laughs> that uh, this streetscape contract that we have. This is not coming out of, per se, city funds. This is the federal grant we got for right. that, and it's a year's contract. It's basically a redistribution. Right. Is that right? Yes, sir. Any further discussion? This is just for one year? One year. That's all the contract will allow. Yes. Are we going to have to pick it up the next year? Well, we could only we could only do the one year contract because that's what the, the money allows. Uh, afterwards, yes, we as a city will have to pick up the maintenance on that down there. But however, there might be some funds left through the grant that we might can apply to is what we've been told. Okay. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. Aye. No. All right. Uh, we're going to do a roll call. Patrick? No. Uh, Pete? Yes. Okay. Mikey? Uh, Timmy? Uh, we have a yes from Timmy. Angie? Yes. And Mr. Bernie? Yes. Okay. Uh, hearing that, uh, the ayes have it. Um, motion carries. Um, moving on. Uh, Change order, streetscape signage, Oricon Construction LLC. So move. Can I get? A, I have a motion. I have a second. 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 Uh, looks like uh, this is to close out the property uh, project of twenty thousand uh, dollars. Credit. Credit to us. So. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. So I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. Uh, any opposed? Motion carries. Uh, number 16, uh, Coral's House duck issue. Um, in here, we have a, a, a note regarding the, uh, well, if I could get a motion first. Move. Second. For discussion. Okay. Go ahead, sir. Well, I thought you might discuss it. Oh, well, I'll be glad to. well I was going to, but you have the floor, sir. So what, what is basically this is saying, the, the duck work underneath the building, evidently some animals or something's getting into it, and they are going to recommend that we uh, protect it with an additional layer, and this will be at no cost to the city. This will be also used through the federal grant that we got for the yes. Coral's House. And that, that amount is $9,087. Um, and if anybody has experienced uh, rodent or animal issues chewing through pipes or insulation, uh, they will perfectly understand. Um, any more? No, any more discussion? All right. Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Uh, so number 17 here is ordinance 665. Water sewer rates. Uh, this is what we were discussing at the beginning, but I'll kind of go through it again, just to uh, for anybody that's missed it. Um, the new contract uh, for solid waste, that's your garbage pickup on Monday, your recycling on uh, Mondays, and debris uh, cleanup uh, as well. 
has been raised over half a million dollars over last year. Um, and what we're proposing to offset this is a $10 utility bill increase over, uh, or utility or water bill increase over uh, what you're currently paying. Um, can I motion. have a motion? Second. second. I have a motion and a second. Uh, any discussion? Yes, it's going to be a roll call, ladies and gentlemen. Um, Patrick? Aye. Pete? Yes. Mikey? Aye. Timmy? That's an aye for Timmy. Angie? Aye. And Bernie? Aye. All right. Motion carries. All right. Um, <coughs> That'll go into effect November 1st. That uh, goes into effect November 1 of 2023. Okay. Uh, contract, Andercorp Construction Management. Uh, can I get a motion? Motion. Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? Is, is anybody here from Andercorp? I'd like to uh, pick their brain. Okay. Do you want to table it? No, well, we can. That's, can get okay. an answer. That's the I, pleasure like here. To substitute motion to table it second. when somebody gets here. I have a motion and a second. Um, I'll reach out. We'll reach out to. Uh, Hunter, excuse me, um, and have him at our next meeting. So, all right, uh, all in favor? Aye. Uh, any opposed? Motion carries. I'll be on our next meeting. Um, <clears throat> okay, uh, let's see. Under 19, Mr. Brian, uh, and I apologize. I hope I don't, uh, is it Gru? Gruy. Gruy, okay. I apologize in advance, sir. No um, worries. <laughs> use of R1 property for an RV park between Markham and Marcy. Uh, I believe you would like to discuss that. Is that correct? I, I would. Thank you. Yes, sir. If you'll so, just introduce yourself and give us your address, please. Right. Brian Gruy. I'm at 142 Markham in Long Beach. Thank you. So, hey, um, thank you to, I don't know if to address you as the Board of Aldermen or City Council, but I think you get the message there um, for uh, giving us this opportunity. Um, uh, by the way, a little side note, I was able to promote to my grandchildren about how government works and that you actually do get a voice. So uh, again, well, that was you. probably a good learning lesson for some kids far away. Um, so anyway, um, you know, your guys' job is not getting any easier. Long Beach is growing and I recognize that. And what I want to make sure that we got on the record is how the residents feel about this proposed development. You know, this comes from the belief um, uh, that Long Beach needs the right development at the right time and in the right place. It is not just a complaint about an RV park. I don't want you to walk away with that. Um, it's our position that an RV park of the size, the type, and the nature being proposed is not proper for insertion into a single family residential neighborhood, and it will negatively impact Long Beach as a whole. The property in question is not fit for purpose because it will cause inefficient and unsafe traffic flow in and around the roadways near Beatline, Railroad, White Harbor, Highway 90, and Markham that are not designed to handle the type and the volume of the vehicles being put forth by the developer. Equally concerning is that the proposed development poses a threat to wildlife and the natural habitat. Waste runoff during construction will directly contaminate the Mississippi Sound, as well as damage historic tree stands and threaten endangered least term nesting ground. Standard construction, construction practices, such as use of a silt fence, cannot prevent this from happening. Finally, this use is inconsistent with the Long Beach Comprehensive Plan for Ward 1, Long Beach in general, and is not aligned with the design and character of the surrounding neighborhood, resulting in decreased property values. The property is bound by Highway 90 on the south, Markham Drive on the west, Marcy on the east, and the CSX tracks on the north. It consists of approximately 30 acres of pine hardwood forest, including approximately 8 acres of forested wetlands. There are scattered magnolia trees and live oaks, which range in size from 18 inches to 5 feet in circumference. Approximately 25% of the property has been classified as federally protected <coughs> wetlands by the Army Corps of Engineers. The property is zoned C2B for two parcels that immediately border Highway 90, and it's R1 for the majority of the 30 acres, which is consistent with the Long Beach Comprehensive Plan. Reason the location is not fit for purpose. On August 31st, I attended a presentation by Hobbs Mize of Hobbs Construction to a group of citizens for a smart development initiative, sponsored by Wendy, by the way. And 
<clears throat> and I uh, appreciate being given the chance to attend that. A plat of the proposed development was provided, showing their proposal will consist of, you can get your pencils and scorecards ready, 200 RV pads with a two-story clubhouse that totals 12,000 square feet, 6,000 per floor, surrounded by an approximately 320-foot long lazy river. At 320 feet, I prefer to call it a creek than a river. A pool and a playground that will cover every square foot of the property. This is a significant deviation from the 2018 special use permit that was issued by Long Beach that called for 77 RV pads and 30 single family homes for that same property. It should be noted that the residents were opposed to that plan as well at that time. But since then, the surrounding neighborhood in this area has doubled in size and the environment has significantly changed. This means that what was done before isn't applicable now. It isn't a cut and paste from then till now. No RV park in the area is bordered on two sides by residential single family homes that are going to be located within 50 feet of the parked RVs according to the plan that they gave us. Nor do other parks operate within districts that are zoned R1. The drawing provided shows entrance to the park is planned to be directly from Markham Drive. Also, no other RV park in the area requires customers to travel on residential streets to access the park. Access, access for, to the park at these other locations is done through what MDOT and U.S. Department of Transportation call collector streets. Basically, streets that have lines on them, center, center lines, you know, white lines on the sides, and are uh, appropriate for that purpose. Um, the developer stated that the project is also dependent on MDOT installing a traffic signal at the intersection of Highway 90 and Markham Drive as well as MDOT performing intersection improvements. As of the meeting on the 31st of August, MDOT had not been contacted to determine the scope or even the feasibility of the state funding such an improvement using taxpayer money for the sole benefit of a private business. No comment was made as to what improvements the city will be asked to make to Markham Drive, given that the entrance must be at least 120 feet from the intersection with Highway 90, and is therefore outside of MDOT's responsibility. Markham is only 19 feet wide, and it has broken and missing asphalt with no curbing at that point in time. It should be noted that the Mississippi Power Utilities border the west side, so moving the utilities would be another additional expense that would be required. Also, the last point is there's significant underground water management directly at that intersection if you remember from oh, approximately two months ago, the brown water issue at Markham Drive, well, the lifting pump is located right there at that intersection on Markham. So an internet search of RV manufacturers shows that the current modern 40-foot SUVs, and I emphasize modern, we're not talking some of the older ones, modern being the last two to three years, they require a turning radius of 44 feet to make a 90-degree turn. RVs entering Markham from the east will need to navigate a greater than 90 degree turn to make the turning requirement, turning radius requirements even greater. In other words, <coughs> it's, not, it's not a square intersection. You got to turn hard right and come over past 90 degrees in order to enter Markham Drive from eastbound, or excuse me, from westbound 90. Um, quite frankly, Markham Drive just doesn't have the real estate to support this kind of an entryway. Um, MDOT formal approval, as well as a formal traffic study and road design plans prepared by a recognized engineering firm must be required prior to even considering a project of this size. This is a significant undertaking and it's there to benefit a private enterprise. So I'm not sure if that would fall under the, the proper use of, uh, of the land or of Long Beach money. RVs would be expected to travel from I-10 down Beat Line to eastbound on railroad, then south on White Harbor to cross the CSX tracks. And I think everybody who's ever been through that intersection would know taking a 40-footer over those tracks is going to be a, it would be a really tough and difficult problem. It could happen, though, I guess. Um, and there is no traffic signal at uh, the intersection of White Harbor and 90 where these RVs would have to take a left turn to get down to Markham. So no traffic signal there. I think you can talk to the chief of police and get his opinion on what that might do to traffic. I'm not probably not qualified to say that, but I could, I could give my opinion. 
Um, if you're coming from the east, again, you have to make greater than 130, about 135 degree right hand turn to get onto Markham Drive. Um, the cost of policing that route, as well as the additional maintenance and the road improvements, is to be borne by Long Beach. We just heard in the, in the budget meeting, I don't think that's in any of the long term view for, for the cost here. Uh, the developer also suggested that at the smart development meeting that access to downtown Long Beach, in other words, why do it? Because people will come and they'll spend money at downtown Long Beach restaurants. That access to downtown Long Beach um, would be improved and almost required uh, that a bicycle and golf cart path be located immediately south of the CSS tracks to connect the RV resort at Markham down to at least Lang so that, those are, so that the golf carts could get to downtown Long Beach. Um, it was believed that the city would be asked to fund such a project and that it would take perhaps multiple years to complete it. Um, my view of some of the requests that were being made are that if the project were approved or prematurely approved and prematurely started um, and none of these events came to pass, MDOT didn't give their approval, the access was, uh, was not proper on uh, Markham <coughs> Drive, the improvements weren't there, the golf cart path wasn't put in. Therefore, Long Beach wouldn't realize the benefits that the developer is putting on the table. But they'll get to blame MDOT, they'll blame the city of Long Beach for not doing the stuff that he needed to be successful. And I think that's kind of a travesty. As far as the environment is concerned, Mr. Mai stated that uh, they would like to try to preserve as much of the natural environment as possible. This statement directly conflicts with the reality that installing the necessary underground utilities will result in clear cutting the entire property and scraping all the topsoil from that property in order to install those utilities. I would ask anybody from the Board of Aldermen or a concerned citizen to take a drive down Highway 90 to Cowan Road where Gulfport is building a luxury RV park. I went by there this weekend and it is cut down to the clay. And the reason it is is because they have to put stakes up and they have to put electric, they have to put sewers in, they have to put water in. It's just part of the construction process. It's not a fault, <laughs> it's just what it is. And again, trying to say that um, you know, preserving the property is, is, good, is, is paramount. The plans themselves show the live oaks, they're mapped on the property and they're gonna be all taken down that's on that property as well as any magnolias that are there. It's gonna be clear cut, folks. And if uh, I would not believe anything otherwise, and you can go see a development to see for yourself. <clears throat> so as a result of that 2015 to 2018 effort that was approved previously, the Land Trust for Mississippi Coastal Plain conducted a study with the hope of being able to preserve the property as a natural feature of the Gulf Coast. They produced a report I'm gonna take some excerpts from the report. It is multiple pages, of course. I'm not gonna read you the whole report here. There isn't time for that, but I can get a copy of the report for anybody who would like it. And it says to the effect, this tract of land, and I quote from the report, this tract of land is of significance to the Mississippi Gulf Coast as one of the only remaining undevelopment tracts of forest land that extends from the beach to the railroad tracks between Bay St. Louis, or St. Louis Bay, of course, and Biloxi Bay. As such, it is an important migration route for many neotropical, that's not my word, that's theirs, <laughs> migrant songbirds that move up creek and river corridors to breeding. Additionally, these coastal forest areas in Mississippi are the last staging area for migrants as they embark on the fall southerly trans-gulf migration and is the first landfall for the northerly trans-gulf migration. It is the winter home to many warblers, flycatchers, and hawks. There is documentation of 85 species of birds utilizing this habitat on this land. 51 species are migratory and 34 species are resident. The Land Trust also noted the establishment of this tract as green space supports the sustainable land use designed as called for in the Long Beach Comprehensive Plan. It preserves a space that has been open since before Long Beach became incorporated in 1905. The establishment of this tract as green space supports a sustainable land use as called for in the plan. The plan says sustainable landscape, an appropriate landscape palette for Long Beach is one that is consistent with the climate and culture of the Gulf Coast. Again, on the habit of how this con directly conflicts with the Long Beach uh, comprehensive plan, 
which I believe was prepared by the Planning and Development Commission and was also uh, put into law through um, the Board of Aldermen. Uh, I think it's Ordinance 597. I'm sure you guys know about it. Um, the developer commented they intend to conduct all-day festivals as well as live music events in the RV park. This use is clearly out of character for an established, quiet, residential neighborhood, and it conflicts with the comprehensive plan for Ward 1 specifically and Long Beach in general. I assume you're all familiar with the plan and how it was prepared and that it was put into law. I'll only call out some excerpts from the document because it is 66 pages, and quite frankly, it's if you, need to get to, if you need to get to sleep, I'd recommend pulling out a copy. <laughs> the plan for Long Beach is based, the report says, the plan for Long Beach is based upon traditional neighborhood design principles and development patterns that reflect the physical and cultural context of the area. RV park in the middle of two residential streets along with festivals and, and music and all-day festivals does not fit that area. Um, the the uh, comprehensive plan also says we need to welcome, wel uh, welcome newcomers and visitors, but without diminishing the values and lifestyles of current residents. You can't tell me that 1,000 people, 200 RVs in your backyard is not diminishing. I only have 17 more pages to go. <laughs> kind of joking. <laughs> okay. Um, the report also says to treat natural resources as precious and finite, which this clearly is. Um, and clear cutting and stripping that land is not treating them as precious, that is for sure. Um, it also says that uh, new development is to follow traditional neighborhood development pattern by right. And those are the words that were put into, uh, into the ordinance. Preserve the character of existing residential neighborhoods. For Ward 1 specifically, oh, excuse me, well, no, this one, ensure that commercial or mixed-use development will fit into neighborhood character. Neighborhood is single-family homes here, folks. So specific to Ward 1, it says to encourage residential development. Residential development, not RV use. Additional development as long as the character of the development is compatible with the neighborhood. Again, if you look at the neighborhood, you can see what's compatible there, and it is not an RV park. There's many more, but I think you kind of get the point of where I'm headed here. So in closing, I kind of want to say that certainly it is an emotional issue for the people who live right by it. I'm not going to deny that, and I'm sure you can understand that, because anybody whose home would be located next to a proposed development would get emotional about it. And so you can see the people behind me here who decide to come out and support us this time. You know, the reason is because it's emotional to them. It is important to them. I get the benefit of being able to at least represent them. In quiet, invading the quiet, peaceful life that we now live in by a 1,000 transient non-residents per week, according to that developer, is alarming, as it should be. Now, mind you, when people come to visit, especially if they're on vacation, I think most of us would agree, you kind of want to relax, you cut loose, you have a few cocktails, you enjoy yourselves. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with RV parks. It's just this is the wrong location for it. This is not the purpose for that. That's where I'm going with this. And trying to take some of that emotion out of it. However, um, you know, those, like I said, those are not just not in my backyard. They're not a NIMBY argument. The issues that I have spoken to are legitimate. I think they're sensible, fact-based, and they represent concerns that any city should deeply consider prior to allowing a developer or any firm to embark on a matter that is this complex and environmentally impactful to the surrounding area. Well, this presentation has taken a bit of time, the actual details, and of course we have more of them. I cut them out. I tried to, tr I tried to tame this down for you all because I know it gets, you get a little glossy, I'd listen to all this stuff, uh, as I would. So what we're asking you is to instruct the Planning and Development Commission, as a matter of course, and not just in this instance, to perform thorough reviews, in-depth, and critical analysis. Not just does it meet the ordinance and pass it along to the Board of Aldermen, but a critical analysis, like we've done here. You know, you look at the street, you understand what's going on in the neighborhood, and then you can provide guidance. It's good for Long Beach in the long term, that developers just can't come in, wave their hands over how great it is, and I'm gonna give you all this money, 
and it's going to solve the budget problem that we, you know, that was proposed earlier, and by hand waving, try to get an approval without thinking about what are the other impacts here. I think, I think, quite frankly, we've probably thought of more of the impacts than the developer has as the residents because it's important to us. It should be important to developers that we decide to do business with and that we want to do business in Long Beach as well. So this is not the same project that was proposed in 2015, and the neighborhood is not the same as it was at that time. So I uh, wanted to say that I'm available for any special sessions that you think might be helpful, whether it's this or it has to do with uh, ongoing planning and development. And I would also encourage, uh, since you have a relationship with the past mayor, albeit maybe a little contentious <laughs> at this time, you know, talk to them about you know, some of the, some of the uh, events concerning RV parks in their city. I believe they just passed an ordinance banning RV parks within city limits. Well, they didn't do that just because they didn't, you know, somebody had a, a bug. They did that because <coughs> they had rightful reasons. I'd encourage you to find out what those are. And perhaps, perhaps, we do the same thing in our town here. Because quite frankly, Long Beach is nice. We need, to get, we need to have our reputation built up as a city that really cares about the residents, has got their back, and that also holds developers for good development and entice that to come here. Thank you for your time. Thank I you. appreciate Thank it. Thank you, Mr. Bryan. Just, I just want to make one comment. Just to let you folks know, we y'all are telling us some things that we have not seen, as far as site planning, the number of uh, uh, RV sites, and everything. So I appreciate you bringing us up to date on that because we haven't seen it. Yeah. I know for, I, and I've talked to this guy one or two times, and and you're right that there's a there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of questions to be answered. So thank you. This still has to go back before the planning zoning board. Yes. And as at so this I, time, it is not two of them yet. No. Yes. No. Yeah, they pulled it uh, before the, the yeah. meeting. <coughs> Probably stepped on prematurely. Um, yeah, yeah. <coughs> it, it does have to go back before uh, the Planning and Development Commission because right. they did pull the application. But um, um, if you're really concerned, if you're really a concerned citizen, you try to get the information out ahead of time and not just be reactionary yeah. to some guy turning in an application here. I mean, and that was the intent here, guys. Yeah. yeah. Quite frankly, there's a, there's a ton of people in Long Beach. Since I started this, getting to know people and the beautification, you know, there's a ton of people that really do care. I mean, did he give, did he give you all a plan we could he see? He gave me a plat. You got one? Fair enough. It still has Fair. to go back to yeah, the board. All, all, yeah, it absolutely does. So. <laughs> okay. Okay, all right. thank any you. More, thank any you. more comments, guys? Please, I'm thank you, sir. Able to no more. Free information. All right. Okay, uh, we're going to move on. Uh, under personnel, uh, police department has, I'd like to take these all under one, if that's okay. Uh, okay. Uh, under police department, we have four step increases. Two new hires. Uh, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna take that back because we do have one retirement, and I want to uh, acknowledge that. So, if I could get a motion under police department, four step increases, one new hire. Two new hires. Two new hires. Excuse second. me. Motion. Second. I have a motion and a second. Uh, uh, any discussion? All in favor. I think the uh, individual is uh, retiring. Wait, well, we're still we're, on police. That's department. why I stopped. I'm sorry. I think it ahead of time. Yep. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> All in favor? Uh, Any opposed? <clears throat> Motion carries. All right, moving on to the fire department. So we have one retirement. Uh, Griff, the, the gentleman's name? I'm sorry, I didn't have it in front uh, of me. Richard, Richard Scott. Scott. Okay, Mr. Richard Scott. Uh, is he here by chance? No. Uh, if you, would you like to say anything about him? Time in that's just there 
I get it. Well, I'll tell you this. Anybody that had to put up with Mayor Bass, uh, this gentleman to my right here, and uh, Chief Skelly for 25 years, I, I definitely send them high, high compliments for putting up with that. Better so. peak. <laughs> Better peak. Uh, so. All right. Can I get a motion? Bernie Wilson. Yeah. Up. I made a motion. Um, and a second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Again, I'd like to thank the man for, for all his time he served with, and he stayed with us through the city. Yeah. Amen. All right. Any opposed? All right. Motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Scott. All right. Uh, so now I'm going to take the rest. Uh, uh, under general administration, we have one step increase. Building office, we have two step increases. Recreation, we have... One step increase and rescind a new hire. It didn't show up. And uh, utility building department, one step increase. So moved. Second. second. A motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Uh, city clerk, holiday <laughs> schedule for FY 23 24. Can I get a motion? Motion. Second. second. I have a motion and a oh. second. A any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Uh, employee uh, insurance benefit for FY 2023 24. Motion. Motion second. and a second. Uh, any discussion? Just uh, let the public we did know get we, a, did, it, we did, did get a 3% decrease in yes. employee insurance. So, all the employees, thank you because that's how we get our decreases. So. so. All right. Uh, have a motion and a second. Uh, any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion <coughs> carries. Uh, fire Department, Chief Skelly? Uh, I would like to give you an update on Station 3, uh, Industrial Park. They have the tractors up. They, they got those on the job. They got them up, moving along, looking good, making big progress. Uh, the other thing I'd like to let y'all Replacement cost. Replacement cost. So uh, that that picks up that portion of it. So Thank you. Down the road. Thank you. Um, while you're talking, uh, I don't know if you've seen saw the email later this evening. Just for the board knowledge, uh, Griff and I will be having a discussion later this week with our insurance underwriter. Uh, is that what we will? work that out but anyways to to find out exactly what our renewal is so thank you griff all right uh police department chief no, sir. thank you sir uh engineering uh we have a change order dna underground for uh troutman lift station so move second any discussions uh dave are we still on board there to finish up i mean have we gotten any reports for with we're still on line to finish up December. Yeah, yes, sir. They're, they're, they're well in schedule, doing good. Okay. So uh, just as a quick reminder, uh, that project that you see along Railroad Street and Pineville should be done middle to late December. Well, and they're on schedule as of now. So um, any more discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Okay. Uh, next is authorized advertisement for Long Beach Harbor Eastern Bulkhead. Uh, this will be uh, the continuation of the outer wall there on the east side. So move. Second. I have a motion and a second. Uh, discussion. Uh, the only concern I had, just kind of throwing it out there to the board, was with them working currently on that, uh, you know, my concern is the actual room out there if we have two contractors out there at one time. Well, we'll just have to work our schedule. We, well, we, we, well, we tabled that. We tabled that. Yes. So. Yes. And a core. So. Okay. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 
Any opposed? Motion carries. All right, uh, project closeout, Linwood Circle water system improvements. So moved. Second. Good discussion. Just to let the public know, uh, this is one of the very last, not the very last, but close to the last uh, subdivision that the city kind of inherited during an annexation and it went, it had two inch water mains, which was very insufficient. Right. And now it's got uh, eight inch and is all new sewage also, David and Joe, or just the water? That's some, just and water. I, and all new asphalt and everything. Yes, right. that's a project. Yes, good job. All right. Um, I have a motion and a second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. All right, uh, Mr. Culpepper, Public Works. I don't have anything at this time. You good? I'm good. You're back getting you, huh? Back getting you. All right. That's from, that's from carrying those two sitting on either side of you. Indeed. <laughs> uh, recreation, Mr. Bob Paul. I'm good. Thank you, sir. Uh, building office. Good. You're good, sir. Thank you. Um, Harbor, David, good. Harry. We're good. You're good, sir. All right, thank you. All right, community affairs, Ms. Courtney. Uh, the um, Mississippi Coastal Cleanup Program is hosting their monthly beach cleanup in Long Beach this September 16th. Um, you do have to pre-register to come. There is a link on Facebook, and you can also reach out to them. This is an extension with Mississippi State. Um, they go around to each different city and do a beach cleanup in Long Beach this September. And then also... I well, before you before you go any further, sorry, um, I because I'm a man of uh, with a big mouth, uh, and as I you can see, I'm sitting here with a past Christian jersey on. Uh, I'll uh, I'll challenge our department heads and our board uh, to for their uh, volunteering. If they if you show up, uh, I'll buy y'all lunch. Of your choice, Mike. There I think you go. It's only two hours. Two hours of time for a free lunch. I'll see you there, Mike. Okay. Sorry. No, you're good. So then I also um, gave y'all pictures of the city holiday banners. I've went around and asked several of the brick and mortar businesses in the city limits, and a few of them have already turned in their checks, so they will be sponsored with businesses. And then the ones that are in between will be one with the city logo. Gotcha. Gotcha. So these are these are all going to be sponsored by the business themselves. Okay. Is this going to be on Facebook so people can see? Yeah. I okay. wanted to go ahead and show y'all first. I did. Thank you. The these signs will be where we hang up our military honoring the military and cancer. Uh, carnival cancer. Did I skip any? No. Okay. All right. Uh, Derek, derelict properties. Th uh, thank you, Miss Courtney. Uh, derelict properties, uh, we have one, uh, 24 Pecan Drive, uh, at, assessed to TTLBL, LLC. Mr. Uh, Alderman Brown. I would like to, I, I, I just spoke with Mike this morning and they've got a new attorney. Uh, I would like to, y'all tell me if you want to, uh, you go ahead and adjudicate this. We, this is the same old song and dance. We every two or three months we got to send a letter and it goes to California. It's same same thing. We had a hearing on this. Oh. No. Okay. Can we start the process? What start the process? Yeah. Have, but starts with have, have, have we sent letters? Where are we at on the current letter? Yes, we have sent letters to the new attorney that I talked to today. They are the owners of two or three properties in the city. Okay. He's, he's saying that they're moving forward on those, but 24 Pecan Drive could take two to three weeks, he's saying. Okay, so... We get started, so if we want to start the process, we'll get it going. So, the, I guess, let me just make sure I'm clear on my question, is we're having to send the new attorney a letter, so the, the clock hasn't started yet. We don't send it to the attorney. To the owner. We send to the owner in California. Okay. That's where the letter goes. Okay. And, and I'm glad you're clarifying that. Yes. Is their time up? I would think so. I'm not for sure, but I, I'll find out tomorrow. You'll I'll double check and, let and then make sure that we get it scheduled. Please. Thank you. Was that? Okay. No, no. I'm told. I, All right. I knew that. All right. Um, so are we, do we go ahead and 
make a motion to adjudicate it? Well, no, we have to have a public hearing. So, okay, so Mike's saying that the timing uh, should be up. He's going to check on that. Just for clarification, I then the it will be <laughs> scheduled for the next. Okay, because we're yeah, getting too many derelict properties. I understand in this that. Town. I understand that, but we, we also have to do it by the. But we start. We got to start making a move on this. Something completely like agree. So hang on, we're going to get this for you. If you want to schedule a public hearing, I would say do it on October third because I have to send notices for the public hearing. That would be when we could do it. All right. You so want to make a motion to schedule I'll make a motion hearing? we do a public hearing on October third. On October third. Second. So second. second. All right. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. All right. So that will be on October third. Um, <laughs> All right, uh, report from uh, our attorney. Nothing. Uh, thank you, sir. Um, and then uh, can I get a motion to re uh, recess until 5 p.m. Tuesday, September 12th? All right, can I get a motion to recess so until 5 p.m. Tuesday, September 12th? At that point, we will review and approve budget and set millage rates. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries.